is your first and last name if you could spell them? Steve LaRue, L-A capital R-U-E. Oh, French man. Uh, well, French Canadian. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see, so what were you doing today? Well, this is a training in how to operate basically the touch screen voting machines that will be offered at used in the uh, June 6th election, the, uh, this election only for uh, hearing, I mean, uh, visually impaired people. Uh -huh. And then the next election? Everyone will have to use them, so uh, I'll be, I'll have experience next election in, in using these. Excellent. And then, so, um, what has it compared to the old way of doing things? Have you done? The, well, the old way, we're going to use the old way for the mass of voters, and it's really very simple. They, they fill out, uh, um, they fill in circles next to their election choices and then they get, they get put into a scanner and the scanner records those choices and then they have the paper backup as well. So uh, it, that, that's very simple. This is not quite as simple, but it also has a paper backup. It has a couple of them actually. So um, I think it has the possibility of being a very effective way to vote. So you like this way better, you think? Or? You know, I'm about 50-50 either way. Uh, Visually impaired people can see their ballot in a larger print in, in the touchscreen mm -hmm. system. That's a plus. And they, if uh, someone's blind, they can hear the selections on an earphone oh. and then just uh, enter their selections on a keyboard. So you don't even have to see to vote with this with a touchscreen system. They, you, they they won't have to. They won't be touching the screens, but they will. Uh, press a keypad. So that's part of this machine too. So it, it expands opportunity, I think you could say, for uh, voting for disabled people. Now what do you think, uh, what do you think of the controversy of, around the voting machines? Well I think that erupted a year or so ago and um, personally I think it was just uh, problems with new equipment or people who didn't know how to operate it correctly. Uh, but I think I think it's certainly feasible. I mean, computers work, and the, they're they're subject of jokes. But on the main, mainly they work, or else we wouldn't have them. And uh, and these will work too. Oh, great, great. Uh, oh, and by the way, do you, do you mind if we broadcast if this gets broadcast? No, I don't mind. I'll just uh, I'll give you my address for the royalty checks. And <laughs> no, this is fine. Oh, great, 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 great. Now I see I see over here that they are going to be giving you some voting machines. Right. And then, what will you be doing with yours? Well, I'll be putting, keeping mine in my living room. They're worth 15000 each, so I don't think I'll put them in my car. And I'll be taking them to the polls probably the night before, or maybe early on, the, on election day and setting them up. Now, what, um, why don't they just deliver them that, the day of or something like that? I think they probably want to limit the things they have to do on election day. You know, I mean, if they have a transportation problem or there's a accident on the freeway on election day, then those machines don't arrive. That's not, that's not good. Now they couldn't leave them somewhere at the polling place already? Or? Well, the polling places are places used for other things. My, my precinct is a, a um, recreational center at a condominium pro uh, uh, oh. uh, project or development. So, I, uh, you know, they, if they left them there, who would guard them for one thing? That's true. And but you know, these will be in my house uh, for a couple of days and they'll be as safe as anything in my house. Okay. So you, you feel comfortable having them at your house? Sure. Okay. Her the reason this is sealed is because the uh, memory card is what's in what's installed in there. That's what's that's what's going to gather all of the counts. So obviously you don't want anybody to get in there. Okay, here goes. That's not too bad. Uh, although, you know, I'll eventually put it, oh, I know, I'll put it in my son's room because he's not here. Patricia Gratian, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A-G-R-A-C-I-A-N. <clears throat> Fabulous. Okay, so um, thank you so much. We're actually here in your house, and you just brought home one of the voting machines. Um, is it actually a Diebold machine? Yes, it is. So, so it's, yes. Oh, um, did you want to take off your glasses? or? Oh, yeah, why don't I do that so it won't be shining there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and then, well, for me, it's like the fact that you took this machine here home, 
sitting here right next to you. Right. And uh, it's just sitting here. And then you're not going to be home every day. I mean, you're not going to be home every hour to watch it. Well, no. That concerns me, too. Right. It's not under lock and key, shall we say. Um, I don't even have any place where it could be under lock and key. I don't have any such place. So, well, you know, we you just hope that n n nobody will break into your house. I mean, that's not it's not expected, and... I have, don't have a record of that in my house, but these these machines went to scattered to all parts of the city, so I have no idea, you know, where they are at this point. Um, what co kind of qualifications did you do you have to have this particular position of being actually in charge and taking care of these mm -hmm. machines until the voting day? Well, I guess two. I called in and I'm a registered voter. But um, I'm, again, apprehensive about the use of these machines to store and to tabulate and count. Just because um, you, you don't... Well, um, my, background is, my background is in computer programming, and uh, I frankly don't trust a software program to do this, to do something this important um, without proper oversight, uh, without proper checks and balances on it. We need to make sure that, that, that we educate as many voters as possible with all of the pitfalls in using uh, software programming for doing this important task. Um, we need to uh, make sure that they have all the literature they can possibly get on it. And that's very hard because uh, our media does not help us. Our media gets in our way. Um, they do not want to cover stories like this. They are not interested in the stories like this. They prefer to cover um, stories about, you know, I guess, what do they call them? Public interest? No, I forget what they call them. The, you know, fluff stories. Mm -hmm. um, and they are not interested in covering stories that show um, assaults against our democracy. Because he's away in LA. Mm -hmm. 